All right, well, good morning. Thank you all for being here today for this uh, historic announcement. I'm uh, very pleased that you're all here, and I want to give a very special thank you to two incredible friends of our university, Mr. George Farmer and Mr. Steve Farmer. Can you help me welcome them to us? I want to thank you both for being here today and thank you for all you do for this community uh, and for our great university. I do want to point out, in case you didn't see it, this past Sunday in the Dominion Post, there was a great picture of this father-son team. Uh, here's the cool thing, with both, both being recognized among the best lawyers in America. And I brought a picture of it for you to see. And a cool thing about it, it says, top lawyers, leading citizens, good friends. And I think that does describe both of them very well. And a little further down it says, the best lawyers in America. Best lawyers is the oldest and most respected peer review publication in the legal profession. So to be listed in that is a pretty big deal. Congratulations, gentlemen. Now, we are here today to introduce two incredible scholars uh, and to celebrate a landmark day in the history of WVU as a national research university. Last year, I had the honor of announcing a transformational gift from the Hazel Ruby McQuain Charitable Trust. It was a $4.6 million initial, initial gift aimed at recruiting and supporting the best graduate students literally from all over the world. The Hazel Ruby McQuain Trust added another 400,000 to bring that gift total to 5 million. With a match from the Research Trust Fund, we were able, we were able to create a $10 million endowment for graduate student fellowship at WVU. This represents the largest gift benefiting graduate research and education in the history of our university. This program supports education and research in areas where WVU is a national leader and in areas that are critical to the future of our state and our nation, such as energy and environmental sciences, nanotechnology and material science, biology, biotechnology and the biomedical sciences, and biometrics, security, forensic science, and identification technologies. With our Ruby Scholars Fellowship Program, we will strengthen graduate education by attracting the best students in the world so they can receive a world-class education right here at WVU. In a few minutes, I will introduce the first two outstanding students who will have earned the designation of Ruby Fellows. Each of them will receive a $30,000 stipend and a $2,000 travel grant for professional development opportunities. First, however, I have the special honor of introducing a member of the Hazel Ruby McQuain Charitable, Charitable Trust to talk about this gift and the way that it supports the vision that Mrs. McQuain had for her home state. The trust has done so much to support the educational dreams of our students, as well as many other worthy causes around the state. Steve Farmer is an attorney recognized in addition to what I just said recognized as one of the best lawyers in West Virginia every year since 2007. He is an alumnus and a great friend of WVU and a former member of the Board of Governors. One, one of the things that I love best about Steve is that he does really feel that it, it is personal responsibility to honor Hazel by growing the trust and by investing in programs that really do make a real difference. Since the trust was created, it has grown by, I, I believe, at least $100 million. And the cool thing is, all that money has been invested back into our community. So the list of organizations that the trust supports is impressive, to say the least, including more than $40 million of support to WVU. So would you please help me welcome and thank Mr. Steve Farmer. If I'd known you were going to talk so much about us, we probably wouldn't have come. I thought this was about them. Uh, thank you very much, President. It's always a pleasure to be with you and with the West Virginia University community. And the first thing I'd like to do is to extend a special thanks to the selection committee of the Ruby Scholars 
uh, program. We uh, believed early on when we first started to visualize this that this program would be only as good as the people that are associated with it, which I'm going to get to you guys in a minute. But the first criteria was to put together a selection prog uh, process that would be valid, credible, and would year in and year out yield the best uh, candidates to become Ruby Fellows. We chose two individuals who then in turn chose a third. We chose John Fisher, who has had a distinguished career, not only in the law, but at West Virginia University, and the same is true with Jack Bowman. They got together and they chose Judy Charlton to be their third. And they set up very quickly with not a lot to work with in the beginning as far as resources, because this is a rather new gift. They worked tirelessly. And I would personally like, on behalf of the trustees, to thank you for your efforts and to thank you for the great job that you've done because you have accomplished what we wanted. And that was you have found for the inaugural class of Ruby Fellows two outstanding people. And we have this thing up and running. And I would really, uh, it's hard to explain how grateful we are. And I would like everyone to recognize their work. I used to play a lot of golf, and I had a buddy who used to say on the first tee, when, before you'd start playing, you can't win them all if you don't win the first one. And that's very much the way we feel about the first class of Ruby Fellows. We're very, uh, very pleased and very hopeful that you two gentlemen will not only enjoy wonderful success in your life, but that you will also understand our vision for you as Ruby Fellows. You are the first, you will always be the first Ruby Fellows. And we have great hopes for you in not only the success in your endeavors, but your success in life. And I would, uh, the president teases me because I always say something about Hazel, but I think it's very important um, for you all to understand a little bit about a woman you never met who is now has a vested interest in your future. She was a very fine person. She and her husband started a company here in Morgantown called Sterling Fawcett, took it from eight employees to at one time they employed over 12,000 employees in this area in a community of just over 20,000 people. They were the backbone of this community and they gave back. And um, I have a poem that I would like to read that makes me think of Hazel and her, and her vision. And I'm gonna commend it to you all. And I'm gonna ask that you all live your lives having received this and having understanding what it is to be a Ruby Fellow. I want this to be part of it. You can see, you can find this poem displayed at the law school. It's called The Bridge. It says, an old man going a long highway came at the evening cold and gray to a chasm vast, wide, and steep with water rolling cool, cold and deep. The old man crossed in the twilight dim. The sullen stream had no fears for him. But he turned when safe on the other side and built a bridge to span the tide. Old man, said a fellow pilgrim near, you're wasting your strength with building here. Your journey will end with the ending day. You will never again pass this way. You've crossed the chasm deep and wide. Why build this bridge at even tide? The builder lifted his old gray head. Good friend, in the path I have come, he said. There followeth after me today a youth whose feet must pass this way. The chasm that was not to me, to that fair-haired youth, may a pitfall be. He too must cross in the twilight dim. Good friend, I'm building this bridge for him. And Hazel built this bridge 
for you and for all of us. And nothing would make us happier to know that as you enjoy the successes in your life, that part of your successes is to build the bridge for people that come behind you. We want to welcome you as the inaugural members of the Ruby Fellow family. And we mean family. We want and are expecting you, just as we expected of our selection committee, to be successful and live lives that will, want, that will cause others nationwide to want to strive to be a Ruby Fellow. Congratulations and thank you all. Steve, that was excellent, and thank you for uh, helping to see that vision of that bridge um, happen for us and for uh, these two fine fellows and for many others. So on behalf of the entire university family, I would like to thank you, Steve, and everyone at the Trust for having faith in us at WVU and for helping us to fulfill our mission. Uh, their work on behalf of the Trust does give great credit to the memory of Hazel and to our phil uh, phil 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 philanthropy in our community. In story after story, it is clear that Mrs. McQueen wanted to help others and that she believed in others. This gift of the funding of top graduate students at, to study at WVU, who will then go out and make a positive difference in the world, is a reflection of her commitment, I believe, to others. Um, I also want to thank the WVU Foundation, led by Wayne King. The private funds raised through the foundation are critical to our continued success at our university. So I want to thank uh, Wayne and all of his team members. Wayne, where are you? Can you help me thank Wayne? At this time, I'm excited and honored to introduce the first two Ruby Fellows at West Virginia University. Derek Banerjee will be pursuing a doctorate in mechanical engineering with a focus on materials research. He has already distinguished himself as a student at WVU while earning his bachelor's degree and his master's degree in mechanical engineering. One of the cool things I've learned is that Derek actually travels to high schools around the state teaching and promoting science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to students and to teachers. He has also taught an undergraduate course supervised the research of undergraduate students, and worked as a tutor. After finishing his doctorate, he hopes to continue working in academia, the best place in the world to work, so that he can pursue his uh, research interest while teaching and recruiting others to the field. Would you please welcome Derek Banerjee. Thank you, Dr. Clements, President Clements. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give my biggest thanks to the late Mrs. Hazel Ruby McQueen, uh, her family, and her charitable trust. Um, as you know, they've benefited this community, as Mr. Farmer said, um, and WVU and West Virginia alike, uh, beyond anything that we could hope to sufficiently recognize. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. George Farmer um, from the trust. Mr. Dotson and everyone from the WVU Foundation, um, the Ruby Fellowship Selection Committee, of course, uh, Dean Salento, I believe he's here, uh, of the Statler College, uh, the chair, Dr. Prutz, and all the professors in mechanical and aerospace engineering, especially my advisors, Dr. Darren Cairns uh, and Dr. Kosas Sierros. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my loving parents, Rob and Kathy Banerjee, who couldn't be here today, but um, they live in Delaware. Uh, and my fiance, Devin Gowdy, who just graduated from WVU as well. Um, and again, I truly have been fortunate in my life to have caring and inspiring family and friends. Without them, I certainly would not be here. Um, again, I'm extremely honored to be selected as one of the first Ruby distinguished distinguished doctoral fellows. Uh, I suppose, thanks to my being the son of an engineer and the grandson of an engineer and a chemist, I was naturally exposed to and have always been very interested in uh, the STEM fields in particular. And with this curiosity and my love for this state um, and also a, general, uh, a generous National Merit Scholarship from WVU, uh, I was able to attend this university practically free of charge. Um, and I'm extremely thankful for that as well. 
since coming here in 2007, as President Clement said, I've earned my bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering. Um, and I was able to earn those while traveling the world, taking part in local and global collaborations. Uh, while performing cutting-edge mechanical and materials research. Um, I was able to publish and present my research as well and take part in outreach programs at local high schools and uh, with middle schools and elementary schools as well. Um, and I hope with this fellowship uh, that I'll not only be able to obtain my PhD um, but continue doing th these things uh, that honestly I could never have imagined myself doing um, while also helping others to realize that they can do the same, uh, building the bridge, if you will. Um, I'm really excited about the opportunities this fellowship provides me, especially the flexibility in my academic and research pursuits. Um, my research with flexible optoelectronics, durable thin coatings, and material characterization um, has helped lead to successful innovative approaches in real products, uh, working with companies in West Virginia and uh, throughout the United States and the world. Um, my research serves to, among other things, increase the efficiency of renewable energy resources and thereby decreasing our demand for fossil fuels. Um, so this fellowship will allow me to continue my work while taking more risks on my research direction and really delving deeply into problems of my interest. I wouldn't necessarily be able to do that if I was funded differently. Uh, and this flexibility will allow me to continue my outreach to high schools and teaching and pro promoting these STEM subjects to students and teachers, as I have done with my National Science Foundation supported program the last several years. Um, I strongly believe that engineering and research fields give this unique opportunity uh, to truly impact society in a, a tangible way. Uh, the rewarding experiences offered through WVU especially keep me interested and inspired through sometimes long and unusual hours working in the lab as Thomas, I'm sure, can commiserate with. Uh, the possibilities for innovation in mechanical and materials engineering are infinite, and it's my aspiration to teach others of their potential broader impacts. Um, as, Doc, as President Clement said, my ideal career path would be to remain in ac academia as a professor so that I can pursue my research interests while training and recruiting others to do the same. And the prestige and support of Ruby uh, Distinguished Doctoral Fellowship will provide me with that flexibility to work on problems uh, while furthering that social, economic, and educational development of the Morgantown community, West Virginia, and the whole scientific community and the world as a whole. Uh, so in closing, I just want to say thank you again to everyone involved. Thank you for coming uh, to this momentous occasion. And let's go Mountaineers. Thank you, Derek. Uh, clearly, we expect big things out of you, and I can tell uh, you have a great future ahead, so I'm thrilled uh, for you, my friend. Uh, it's also great to see a young person who cares so much about teaching others, inspiring others, especially in the STEM fields where we need it so badly. Um, I'm now uh, pleased to introduce our second Ruby Fellow, uh, Thomas Devine. Uh, we'll be pursuing a doctorate in computer science with a focus on computer science issues within the astrophysics industry. Thomas clearly has a passion for advanced study. He has already earned three bachelor's degrees, one in philosophy, one in mathematics, and another in computer science. He's also earned a master's degree in computer science from WVU. After earning his doctorate, he hopes to advance the fields of computer science and astrophysics and enrich our understanding of the universe. Please welcome Tom. Uh, thank you for that great introduction and uh, thank you all for that warm welcome. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a local boy. I was born and raised just a few miles south of here in Fairmont. I always had a natural aptitude for computers. I started writing programs when I was in fifth grade on these ancient, uh, you know, TI and Commodore machines. Uh, I never, I was self-taught for all that, which is the sign of a uh, true research man. <laughs> Uh, I, I also always had an interest in astronomy and astrophysics, and it's funny, but when I was a kid I used to say when I grew up I wanted to be a theoretical astrophysicist. thought that was the coolest job in the world. Uh, right now I have the coolest job in the world. I didn't know about this one though. 
Uh, I graduated from East Fairmont High School in 1999, and then I went to uh, St. John's College, which is a great books school, wonderful institute. We studied the great ideas of mankind. Um, that's where I ended up with my philosopher degree, but we studied astronomy, physics, uh, mathematics, literature, philosophy, poetry, you name it. It's just a well-rounded education that would uh, make Plato proud. Uh, I graduated in 2003 from there and I worked in IT for a few years, uh, but then I decided I needed more technical skills. I uh, wasn't making a meet, so I went back to uh, Fairmont State where I graduated with a double major in mathematics and computer science in 2010. Now that's where I first started doing research. Uh, it really changed my life. Uh, over the summer there, uh, I got an opportunity where I was uh, writing data mining software for uh, the chemistry department where they would look at their educational databases and uh, try to glean information from all these ones and zeros. Uh, so I helped them out a little with that uh, to help improve students' educational experiences and they still use that uh, software today. Well, the summer after I graduated from Fairmont State, I spent writing software at the uh, Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, uh, which was a life-changing experience. There I worked uh, hands-on with these massive amounts of data that astronomers gather. I mean, they can get a terabyte an hour and uh, just fill uh, data banks with data. Uh, and while I was there, I learned about the problems they have from the people in that community. And the problems aren't just isolated to that field. Uh, big data is worldwide. Uh, and everybody has trouble handling it, dealing with it. It's becoming a buzzword in the computer science industry right now. So that's where I solidified my research direction. What I, what I want to do is create a synergy between the computer science um, and astronomy fields. I want to use their data and, uh, and its complex nature to help develop new algorithms and techniques for handling these massive amounts of data. And at the same time, I want to use uh, you know, techniques developed from computer science and state-of-the-art algorithms there to help them in their search uh, for knowledge in the universe. Uh, so as an example, right now, uh, I'm focused on improving search techniques. So astronomers have so much data, like I said, that processing it and searching it for the patterns that they're looking for can be extremely difficult. Uh, it's also extremely noisy data. So right now, I'm applying uh, state-of-the-art ideas in search-based software engineering from the computer science community uh, to try and see drastic improvements in how they handle their search process. Now, of course, I'm going to do much, much more. I'm really excited about this. Uh, in the near future, I, I want to examine how they handle the raw data itself, how it's stored, how it's transferred, uh, and find ways to maybe parallelize some of the algorithms so they can operate on um, like the cloud where we have this massive computing power, if only we will step out and use it. Uh, and I want to take what I'm work learning by working on these problems uh, and make a career out of applying it to other areas um, in industry that have this big data and have these same problems. Uh, and as industries keep collecting more and more data about every little thing, uh, this is a, a huge research area with a lot of opportunities in, in the world right now. Uh, but ultimately, I want to build that bridge. I want to establish a lasting bond between the computer science and astronomy departments that will continue to endeavor uh, after I'm gone, if I ever leave. <laughs> uh, this fellowship means absolutely the world to me. I, I am so honored uh, to be standing right here right now and talking to you. Without it, I'd probably be a code monkey in Silicon Valley right now, uh, plugging away for Google, writing some lame software that somebody told me exactly how to make. Um, but with it, you know, I can give back to the scientific community. Rather than being that construction worker, I can be an innovator, be, be an architect uh, of the ideas that are going on right now. It's very exciting. Uh, aside from giving me the freedom to focus on research that I want to focus on, which is, is great, uh, this also gives me access to equipment, you know, that I couldn't otherwise have. Uh, in the very near future, I'm planning on setting up a, a data center in the lab over in ESB and connecting it to a worldwide uh, global network of computers used for research um, that's been out there for a long time. And there is a, a place where we can test these uh, algorithms and techniques in these m m uh, massively networked uh, environments uh, that we see on the internet today. 
Uh, in closing, I would like to thank the foundation, uh, the selection committee, everybody involved, the farmers, the, all of it. This is just the greatest thing ever. Um, you know, I'm a hometown boy, and you guys have made my dreams possible, and that really means a lot to me. I'd also like to thank uh, my mom and my fiance uh, for supporting me through, uh, through all this crazy journey I've been on and uh, giving me the strength and determination to see those dreams through. And of course, I'd like to thank you all for listening to me today. Thank you very much. Wow. I'll tell you what, selection committee, you deserve a round of applause for picking those. <laughs> These guys are superstars. If this is what our future represents, I'm feeling really good. Um, that's unbelievable. And Thomas, you're singing my songs because I have a computer science background. So when you start talking about big data and pattern recognition and data analysis and uh, data mining, I'm, I'm right there with you. Maybe when I'm finished being president, I'll come and work in one of your labs. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm really. <laughs> I tell you what, though, both of your presentations and, and the passion that you have for what you're doing, I, 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 if these are the first two, I think we won the first one. I think we won the first, uh, the first round. This is, uh, this is a special day in many ways. And Thomas, your words certainly help us all to understand how this level of support can really make a difference and help our students fulfill their dreams. And I know, I know both of you will. Um, you, too, are the first of many great students who will build a proud legacy for the Ruby Fellows Program at WVU. As our State of Minds campaign continues, we are grateful for the generosity of the Hazel Ruby McQueen Charitable Trust for giving uh, our students the opportunities, literally, that will transform their lives. And obviously, as we have seen, the lives of others uh, who follow behind them. So thank you all for being here to celebrate the first in what uh, will be a long line of extraordinary gra graduate students with the honorable title of Ruby Scholars. These scholars will go on to achieve great things in their lives, and that will bring honor to our great university and to the wonderful memory of Mrs. Hazel Ruby McQueen. Can you one more time help me thank the farmers and the others for making this happen? All right, thank you all for being here. Uh, God bless you all. Let's beat Texas and let's go Mountaineers. <laughs>